Good evening. My name is William E. Bill Baxter. I'm a published author and recorded artist. Today, I'm going to be presenting an interpretive reading. Now, I gave a short version, a speech, in my Toastmasters Club earlier today. But tonight, I'm going to be reading this short story, which I published on my blog, entitled, Learn a Lesson from Mr. Webster. It's a story about a man's courage, a man who put the needs of America and what was in America's best interest before his own political ambitions and dreams, even though it would cost him dearly in the political game. Learn a Lesson from Mr. Webster by William Edwin Baxter. In the year 1850, America was threatened by southern states wanting to secede from the Union and by possible civil war between the North and the South. In an attempt to preserve the Union, Senator Henry Clay devised and put together the Compromise of 1850, which drew fire from both sides, North and South. Two of the most controversial elements of Henry Clay's compromise were, one, California being admitted to the Union as a free state. The North cheered, the South grumbled. And the Fugitive Slave Act, of 1850, the North grumbled and the South cleared. I mean, cheered. Clay needed to top, needed a top notch orator to give a speech supporting and promoting the compromise. Now, Daniel Webster was one of the best orators in America around 1850. One cold winter night that same year, Henry Clay journeyed to the home of Daniel Webster in Massachusetts during a snowstorm. Clay entered the house and asked his friend if he would give a speech supporting his compromise. Webster was reluctant to accept Clay's request at first because such a speech could ruin a lot of his political ambitions and his desire to become president in the future. The one thing he desired over his ambition to be president was the preservation of the Union. Soon Webster realized that the only way he could help preserve the Union was to accept his friend's request and do the speech in front of the Congress supporting Henry Clay's compromise, even though it could cost him a lot of what he held dear and destroy him politically. Can you even imagine a politician in Washington today being asked to carry out such an assignment, it would go something like this. <clears throat> I have the, this bill I am trying to get past, which seems to be drawing fire from both sides of the Senate chamber. I need you to give a speech in front of Congress supporting my bill. Just... Uh, just so you know up front, you will be committing political suicide. But hey, 
you will be doing this country a great service. What do you say? I would imagine the response to this controversial request would be something like this. Uh, I got a goose burning in the oven. I'll catch you later. <laughs> that is not how Daniel Webster responded. He knew that by giving this speech in Congress, he could lose a lot. But again, his stronger concern was the preservation of the Union. And so he willingly put aside himself and his political ambitions and put America and its best interests first. And so he gave his famous speech on March 7th, 1850 in Congress. The speech did draw fire from both sides, the North and the South, at least for those who could stay awake during the three-hour presentation. Webster did receive a lot of backlashing from politicians for quite a while. He never got to be president of the United States. Two years later, with his health failing, Daniel Webster died on October 24th, 1852, at the age of 70. Now, if you think Daniel Webster is remembered in U.S. history as being a loser, guess again. Putting the good of America and America's best interests over his own political dreams of being president, even though it could destroy him, took great bravery and courage. Daniel Webster sought to do the right thing, even though it would cost him dearly. You don't find many politicians like him today. Because of Daniel Webster and his 7th of March speech, secession from the Union and Civil War were prolonged another 10 years. That is what he is remembered for in history today. His bravery and courage were immortalized over a hundred years later in a best-selling book by John Fitzgerald Kennedy entitled Profiles and Courage. In the mid-1960s, a TV series on this book aired. One of the most prominent episodes of this TV series was that on Daniel Webster, who was brilliantly portrayed by famous actor Martin Gable. For those of you who have leadership roles, have you ever asked yourself how you would like to be remembered in the future? Possibly even after you are gone. What kind of positive legacy would you like to leave behind? You would want it to be positive, I am sure. Well, I'd like to offer you one bit of advice to conclude this speech. Learn a lesson from Mr. Webster. Thank you for tuning in to Web Speech Platform tonight. I say you don't find many politicians that are willing to put a lot on the line to do what's right for America, preserve freedom and democracy, and protect the Constitution. Well, there's two I can think of today in Washington.
Now, I have a single record called the American Patriot Medley, which I dedicate to American patriots for defending American freedom and democracy. And so the two people I would like to dedicate my song to tonight who have fought hard to preserve freedom and democracy to help drain the swamp and rid the country of socialists and leaders and have taken a lot of flack for their efforts. And one of them has people have tried to flake him on phony criminal charges many a time. Well, these two American patriots I dedicate my song to are Donald J. Trump and Kerry Lake. Thanks again for listening, and you all have a good night now.